The big reveal. There it is. <laughs> it says, look ma, no feet. Hey everyone, Larry Chen here. We are at Grid Life Lime Rock again. Love this place so much, but I got my buddy Torsten here who I reached out to you because I wanted to get into racing. And after all this time, we finally get to feature your race car. And I really do have to thank you and I appreciate you for giving me all the advice up until this point. Was it helpful? Just to give me that extra oomph, that extra step Good. to get into racing. So now I have my racing licenses and I've been behind the wheel as much as I can. But I wanna know about your program. I wanna know about what you're doing. For those of you guys who don't know, Pennzoil supports us both in our endeavors, right? Pennzoil supporting you with your racing and they support me with my content creation. Yep. What are we looking at here? What is this car? This is Peggy. Peggy is a uh, Cayman S, 3.4 liter, that was uh, converted into a track car about five years ago. And so now, she's what uh, gets me around the track. So then you bought this as a street car? I bought this as a race car. The owner before me uh, converted it into a race car. Got it. So then when you got it as a race car, you had to convert it into a hand control vehicle. Yeah, the only two things that I really did to the car was hand controls and I modified the uh, the roll cage. So it's a little easier for me to get into. Now the Can reality- Can we take a look at that? Sure. Now the reality is after having used it for so long- It looks like you've traded paint with somebody. <laughs> there are two types of drivers. Ones that have crashed and ones that will. I now have my yeah. battle scars to prove it. <laughs> um, so now that I have the car and I've used it for a while, yeah. the cage used to come out very high. It was a NASCAR style cage, where it also came out into the door. Hard to get into. So I wanted to still be legal, go in, drop down a little bit, and then go forward. The reality is, after a year of using it, I, don't, I wouldn't need to change it again. So, so I then, could have a crossbar. When you modified it, you brought it down lower, thinking that it would be faster for you to get out of it? Faster to swing my legs in and out, and for me to get in and out as well. Got it. Right, so look, I need to be able to get out in a really quick amount of time if something happens on track. To have something that's really high, I wasn't confident that I'd be able to do it. Okay. However, now that I have actually raced the GT4 Club Sport at Coda, I've gotten into ones with crossbars. I now know that I can do it. But like everything, you start with where you know, and then you continually progress to something more aggressive. Honestly, the big thing for me is really showing that nothing can stop you from racing. You're gonna race no matter what. Yep. And you using hand controls, you know, hopefully it inspires a lot of other people to get into racing despite their challenges. Yep. Track driving is about creativity. Whether you're in a wheelchair, whether you're too large or too skinny or too short, too tall, whatever it is, like we all make the modifications that work for us. Yeah, I happen to have hand controls and I did a little bit something to the roll cage, but ultimately everybody needs to find their thing that works for them. And it doesn't always happen right away. It takes getting used to and trying it out, failing, and then uh, trying again, failing again. So then normally you're fully suited up. Fully suited up, correct. And uh, I can get in and out. And so I have... Whoa. That, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. Whoa. So, <laughs> as somebody in a chair, if you drive like this, you get really, uh, you get fatigued. But the more you drive like this, this is less fatigue, right? So, and I'll explain that in a minute. So when I'm tracking, I'm actually as, cl it's as close to me as possible so that I'm going fully around like that. Okay. So 
how's my car set up? These are my hand controls. This is actually a prototype that has never been seen before. So it is turn for gas, push for brake. Whoa. I don't have dexterity in my left hand. So I go like this and it locks me in, right? However, I can catch a spin, but if something goes really wrong, I'm out, right? Otherwise it could break your hand. Could potentially break your hand. But I've been into walls before, you know right beforehand, like an able-bodied person, you take your hands off the steering wheel so you don't snap your thumbs, right, and wrists. I do the exact same thing, I'm just using one hand to drive the whole time. Now you why these have it. not been seen before uh -huh. is I chose a PDK because it shifts really fast. So does a DCT, right, dual clutch. However, there are times when I want them to be able to shift. I want to be able to control the shift. So this is downshift, that's upshift. So that when I'm in full brake, I'm downshifting. Really neat. When I'm in full throttle, that's upshift. Oh, that is so cool. This right here, push is comms, up is pit limiter, right is drink, down is uh, lights, or flashing lights. And I, I don't know yet what's happening in the, in, to the left yet. But as you can see, it even popped out right here because this is a prototype. So then, this is something that you reached out to me a while back about. Uh, yes. I guess because you were trying to figure out the CAN system with the PDK. And like, what, what, can you explain to me why you needed to figure that out? So, if I'm ever in a, uh, a team race, I don't want these to become invalid or unusable. So I needed to figure out a way how to tap into the car's brain, if you will, and allow me to shift as well as somebody else because the brake and the throttle are manual. So you'll be able to see when I push down on the gas, you'll be able to see the gas go. When I push forward on the brake, you'll see the brake uh, go forward. Oh, it's connected then. Directly connected, so there's no there's nothing that can go wrong in an electrical sense, right? That's number one. Number two is I want the feeling, the you know, of the pushback of it. If it's electric, yeah, yeah, you know, you don't really feel that. Um, so I nothing see. can go wrong with this. So then, when you're pushing it forward, um, it's pretty much it, you're able to use your like your full muscle and, and also your full strength to get on the brake. So what, what I really like about this is I lock my elbow in here. Most braking gets done like this, right? It's just a little bit. But as an example here at Lime Rock, turn one, and then, you know, depending on who you're racing and what you're racing, maybe before the uphander you give a tap, but that's the only time I'm really going full up, you know, and then trailing down with the brake. Uh, that being said, I, depending on the track, I put the connection of where this goes onto the brake stem up or down. The higher up I go, the less I need to push forward, right? It's, it, it catches really quickly. But there's some really fast tracks like uh, VIR where there are only really two braking zones and the rest you wanna finesse it. I drop it down on the brake stem so that I've got more travel, but I get to be more exact with my, with my input. But are you still able to push full force for it to full essentially force. get into ABS? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. And I'll tell you what, what terrified me for the first time is this is a Cayman S. Street cars and most cars have boosted brakes. So they've got an assist, right? In a race car, like a club sport or a, uh, um, or a cup car, they're manual brakes. It's a reason why they say standing on your brakes. Well, I didn't know that. And when we did WRL down in Coda in December, we used somebody else's GT4 Club Sport. I went out there and after an hour, I was in tears. My upper body, just from pushing forward on the brake, was been, it was bananas. And I had some of my team try it and they were like, I'm not doing this for more than one turn. Yeah. Like it was that hard. But you do what you gotta do yeah. and you suck it up.
right? So then what did you have before then if this is a new prototype? So this is all the same, but do you see the casing here? Uh -huh. How this is all a singular casing? Right. We worked with the manufacturers just to cut it up and create this prototype. Yesterday, I got the 3D printed mold back where this all looks the same because these are street hand controls that I modified. Oh. And so now they look just like this, except they have these two buttons on them. Oh, okay, so then what is this adjustment for? Or so is this for locking something? This is, let's, I'm gonna use the, the bad word of cruise control. Oh. So if I lock it in here, see how it stays in gas? Right. Well, if I'm in, the, in pit lane, and I got in and I need to be uh, gearing up on my way to the track, able-bodied people can use their feet while they're doing this. I can't. So throw on the pit limiter. I can just put it in full throttle. It's not gonna go faster than what we set it to, right? Mm -hmm. As that's happening, and then look, it just pops off real easy. Or worst case scenario, it just goes up. So then right? this, in this configuration with this car, you can, what, what's your fastest time here? Uh, here at Lime Rock, my PR is 57.7. 7. Uh, I think that there's, I think I can get into the 56.7s, because uh, that was with used tires, used Yokos. I think with, with stickers, I'm 56.7 around there. Incredible. Now, the other thing that I didn't mention, Larry, uh -huh. is from here, I have on both sides of my legs, I have straps that hold down my legs. Got it. And that's because otherwise they would move. They would move. Um. I don't want them, you know, banging against anything. They'll never touch the brake or gas, but uh, I want to be one with the car, just like an able-bodied person does. Right. Right? I want to be one with the car. So I strap down on both sides. We use half-inch Velcro so that if something were to happen on track and I need extraction, this will just break right away. I mean, the, the G-forces aren't that strong that, that I need something thicker, mm -hmm. but I wanna be able to make sure that, that they stay down. Mm. So I lock them in that way. Off camera, you were mentioning something about a cooling system. Yep, so uh, I also have the chill out system. So as a, as a C6 quadriplegic, I can't regulate my body temperature. So I have the chill out system, which turns on right here and that plugs into a shirt mm. that doesn't just run cool water, it actually runs a specific fluid and uh, it keeps me cool. Well, it, it makes sure that I don't get super hot, let me say it that way. Right, it basically replaces like a, like a cool system that you put ice and water in. Exactly. But it, it just has no maintenance, you just turn it on and it goes. And this thing lasts for hours. I mean, the chill, chill out uh, is great because the, the cool shirt's 20 minutes, maybe 30 or 40 minutes, depending on the day. This thing, I plug it in and I'm going for multiple days on end without uh, replacing the fluid. Got it. It's fantastic. And then other than that, you know, you've got my checklist here. You know, it starts with 12, deep breath, remember to have fun, and then destroy everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And then so, other than that, you know, look, these hand controls come out if they wanted to within one minute. Anyone can drive it yeah, or I, I can mean, sell I just, it. I drove it here. All right, so this is the process. You take off the wheel. Take off my leg straps. So then you have to have, you, and then you, you have to unplug your cool system I'm assuming radio if you have one. Yeah, and I do. However, all that snaps in an emergency situation. So I can get out in about nine to 12 seconds. Now in a emergency situation, my only goal is to get onto the grass on the track. Then I can kind of scoop myself away. Right? But as long as I'm out of the car, then we're all good. So then let's talk about the racing that you're doing. Yeah. What's the majority of racing that you're doing in this car? So right now I'm trying out different leagues because all different leagues have different feels and different you know, groups that run with them and, and all that. So I'm doing International GT, I'm doing SVRA, I'm doing uh, um, HSR and SCCA because they all have different feelings, right? Now next year I'm moving up to a GT4 club sport 
which will get me into things like IMSA if I want to, Porsche Sprint Challenge if I want to. It opens up the doors because it's more regulated, because these are, you fit into a class of the build that you made, right? Versus you know what class you're in because it's a factory built race car. So then are you gonna have to modify it more in order for you to be able to use the manual brakes on those? So, well, I'm not gonna change the manual brakes because I'm a glutton for punishment. And look, I don't wanna change many things. I want other people to get in. So I just work out a ton to be able to do that. The only thing that I will have to do is in order to get the clutch, get the car out of first gear with a the clutch, there's a stick that just pushes down. Going from zero to, to rolling, you don't need to hold the steering wheel, right? So you just hold it down, slowly release it while I'm giving gas. And then that stick doesn't matter anymore because you never touch the clutch anyway when you're on track. So if I were to spin on track, if I need to start moving, I can do it. But most of the time a race team is pushing you anyway to get out of it. So I can race anything that's a dual clutch, anything that's uh, Supras and Aston Martins and Mercedes. And I mean, I can't believe I'm so fortunate that I actually get to say those words. It blows my mind, to be very clear. The reason why I race them is because they make me equal to able-bodied people. If I were to do a Mazda Miata, you need to be able to shift with that in order to be equal. I can't do that. Unless you buy a sequential, we can figure that out. But you're at 130 grand there starting anyway, right? Uh, why not just buy a dual clutch at that point? The slower cars, I just can't get into them because I can't shift. But look, the trend, the way the trend is going, we're, we're losing clutches anyway, right, on modern day race cars. They only have them to get out of zero. So that means that within the next couple of years, I'm gonna be able to race whatever I want to race, mm -hmm. which 10 years ago, I would have never, never have thought that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. I love that for you. It's crazy. What a cool car though. Thank you. I, I, I mean, this is a lot of car for me too. Just, I couldn't imagine just the, the precision that you have to have on the hand side. Uh, yeah, well, I'll say the one thing that people say when they get out of my car, the one word they use is smooth. Mm. Because your hand-eye coordination is faster than your eye-foot. So I have the ability to really manipulate in a fine way the gas and the, and the brake. It's incredible. You would, you would never believe it. But it's super, super, super smooth. Quite honestly, some people think that that's an advantage that we have. And I might say maybe but I don't have back muscles, so I can't hold myself up. I don't have, uh, I can't regu my, regulate my body temperature, so I get hot. I steer with one hand. So if you want to give me an advantage, maybe, but I got a ton of other disadvantages, but I'm still placing first in most of my races, so uh, I guess I got something that I'm doing okay. <laughs> I love that. So then, how long have you been racing now, then? Uh, last year was my first race year, and I've only been on track for three years. I guess I just figured it out. You really just jumped right into I it. I jumped right in. Racing is the, and track driving is the only sport that makes disabled people equal to able-bodied people. There's no other sport that makes this equal. Unless you're British and you think that throwing darts makes you equal, but I think that that's drinking adjacent, right? Like, that's not a sport. This is the only sport where you and I will be in the same division, period. And when I felt that for the first time, I felt equal where no one knew that I was in a chair when we were on track. It was just me in the car, equal to everyone else. There's, there's a, just a feeling that goes along with that that I, I, I struggle to give you words, right? Because after 30 years now of being in a chair, not to find something that makes me equal to you, you live with it. But I want to be equal to everybody. No. It's racing. I want to be first. I don't want to be there equal. I want to be first to everyone. So then what is Just Hands? So because of this feeling, I didn't want to just do this myself. I needed to share this with other people because for other sports, others helped me get into them. So I now wanted to be able to help other people. So we created the Just Hands Foundation, which has a, another 981 came in that is just for other people to use so that they get to experience what I get to experience. 
starts out with HPDE with track driving, and then if they want to get progressively better into racing. That's what Just Hands is. And look, thanks to, to Lime Rock, and thanks to a lot of people like Pennzoil that don't treat me as somebody in a chair, but rather treats me as a racer that happens to look a little bit different. And by that, I mean beautiful. Uh, they help me out. And th th it's not a cripple party. They are just kind of like, you're good. Let's help you. There are not that many brands that do that, right? That really see what we're doing and say, I want to be part of that. And so we're very, we're very lucky that they help us with Just Hands. I love that. That's awesome. Do you normally run the Yokohamas on this? I am, unless a race league makes me race something else, which I don't like, I'd rather stick with my Yokos. Um, I can't get into certain race leagues if I, if I do that, but uh, my, my tire of choice is by far Yokos. They've got a stiff sidewall that lasts really long. They're predictable for me, and so I know what I'm getting. And because the fall off takes so long, like I've got a long time to be out there and still trying to chase my, my uh, quality, quality times. And have you done any endurance races? Yeah, so I did WRL. My first endurance race was WRL. That was intense. That was difficult because for over an hour to two hours, not only are you trying to get your best lap over and over again, but the braking scenario was very difficult. One that I had not thought about yet, but I did it and now I'm gonna do more. Because I like the fact that I'm doing it with other able-bodied drivers. This is not just a wheelchair team, right? This is a, a team with people that race. So then when you, when you jump out, uh, they get in, they leave all the controls in there. They leave the hand controls, they just use the pedals. And most race leagues allow one other person over the wall. And that person essentially is my legs. Got right? it. Right? Just to uh, make sure you're in the chair, off, off pit lane. So they, they get me out. They put me onto pit wall. I kind of lean back. Somebody else then just, you know, puts me into my chair. But that one person is not allowed to touch anyone else. They're not allowed to touch the other driver to help them. They're not allowed to do anything with wheels or on the car. They are just there to be my legs. Got it. So we're not penalized for one extra person over the wall. Got it. So then if, let's say, if they do take you and put you on the wall, can they go back and help the other guy strap in? No. So there is another person that does that. Got right? it. Right? This person is solely, they're just my legs. So my legs wouldn't go back and help the next person, right? Right, right. Uh, so they're just there with my legs. Now, if I wanted to really try and be equal to people, I might go, we don't need that person. Just put me on the wall and then someone else can, can, can uh, that person can help the person in the car. But at the end of the day, that is probably my biggest limitation, that you can get out of the car within, I don't know, 12 to 15 seconds around there. It takes me around 25 seconds. Doesn't sound like a lot, but we all know that, that seconds matter. So unfortunately, that's my limitation, right? Mm -hmm. Just make it up on track. <laughs> yeah, that's been said to me before too, and I'm like, mm, yeah, I want to bring the car home, okay? Right. <laughs> you know, but it's it's hard, right? It's hard, but uh, I'm not gonna let that stop me, right? Like that's most of the racing I do though is uh, our sprint challenges, right? Our single driver, and then I don't need to worry about that. Got it. I don't. Cool. Well, thank you so much for bringing out your car. Thanks for letting me drive it. I'm going to drive it back to your trailer with the hand controls. Film it while, you know, while you're going over there. Okay. Because then someone can watch you kind of like, <laughs> you know, figure it out. Yeah, okay. But look, it's really sensitive, right? And it's just like anything else. You know, a little bit, you know, you'll start to feel that. Right. I'll just hover over the brake pedal well, with my what, foot just in case. Here's what I will say, don't. Oh, okay. Cross your legs. Oh my Indian God. Style. The reason why is when your feet are straight, you have a desire to push forward. Trust me on this one, man. Just trust me here. Cross your legs, turn on the car and go. Okay, all right. I'm scared. I promise I'll you, you it. won't hit anyone. <laughs> okay. Right? All right, I'll try right now. <laughs> 
Oh. Wait, look. Okay. Wait, so how come how come it doesn't move when I'm Oh. Oh, I feel it. Okay, so this is just connected directly to the brake, but it doesn't move when I brake because there's a, then there's like a slack in it. But when I use the gas, it turns. That's crazy. And then so this is like kind of like cruise control. You could just lock it. That's so cool. Okay. All right. I'm going to try this. So put it in drive. Oh. This is so weird. <laughs> this is super weird. Wait, what's crazy is you could push gas and brake at the same time. So, wait, so how do you shift up? Like this? Oh! I'm, just, I'm scared. Oh my god, this is so weird. This is not easy. I couldn't imagine going 10 tenths like this. It's so cool that you could just, I mean, it's the gas, but you're using, it's like a motorcycle. <laughs> that is so cool. 